By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a nice tribal old school fight for you. We've got zombies taking on kobolds. And before we go to the match, there's always a little deck deck. Now, if you want to go straight to the games, no worries. Check the description below. There you will find a timestamp. Click on the timestamp. That'll take you straight to the games. And here we are going to continue with the deck tech. I'm going to start by looking at my own zombie deck, Zombie Disco. And then we'll take a look at Kobolds. And here we see a picture of the deck that I am playing with today. It's a little blurry, the picture, by the way. So sorry for that. Um, this is my Zombie Disco deck. And it's basically built around the strategy of um, Nefneral's Disc and Zombie Master. So what Zombie Master uh, does, it's two black and one. And it gives all the zombies regeneration for one black and it gives them swamp walk. So uh, basically what I want to do is I want to get all my zombies out, give them regeneration with the zombie master, then get my disc out, blow up my disc. I get to regenerate all my creatures. I get to keep my creatures. My opponent loses everything and then I just kill him with a horde of zombies. So that's, that's the dream with this deck basically. And I'm... Um, I'm also playing with some non-zombie creatures. Uh, Will of the Wisp is very good in this deck because it has regeneration with the Bat Moon. Um, so that's really nice. So when I when I use the disc, I can regenerate it. Uh, my Willow, obviously, my disc will also destroy the Bat Moons. So I guess that's part of the strategy. That's not really great, but still, if you can get a Will of the Wisp turn one and a turn two Bat Moon. I, I still think that's a pretty strong play. You've got a 1-2 flyer with regeneration. That feels pretty good for a turn 2. Um, then I'm also playing with um, Nightmare. So Nightmare is 1 black and you have to pay 5. It's flying. And it's got power and toughness equal to the amount of swamps you control. It's just an iconic creature. And I just have it here as a finisher. So it's really in the deck as a finisher when I'm kind of... My opponent has just gone through all of his or her resources, having to deal with all of these Nefneral's Discs activations. And then at the end of the game, I'm like, bam, I'm slamming my Nightmare on the table. And here you go, a 6-6 six, six flying creature. And I'm just going to barge in there. Um, what else is there? So besides the zombie theme, there's also a strong uh, Swamp Walk uh, theme in this deck. So I'm playing with four evil presences, turning my opponent's lands into swamps, and then using... Uh, of course, my Zombie Master to give Swamp Walk to all my zombies, but I also have Bokrath that has uh, the Swamp Walk ability uh, by its, from itself. So that's also a great way. And if you then again can combine it with a Bad Moon or two, all of a sudden you've got a 5-5 five, five or 4-4 four, four unblockable creature and that can deal some serious damage. So um, this is basically the deck. You can build this completely out of revised cards. Um, it's really a budget brew. So if you kind of like this idea, it's really easy to make for yourself as well. And it's actually surprisingly strong. I mean, you're not going to win a tournament with this, but you're going to beat some decks and it's a lot of fun to play. Okay, let's take a look at the Kobolds deck of my opponent. My opponent, Desert Nomad, is bringing a Kobolds deck to the table. And I have to say, thank you for doing this, man, because I really, really like Kobolds. I think they're, they're really cool. I, I have had one match before, I believe, with Kobolds, and that was just an amazing, amazing game. Um, let's take a look for the people that don't know what kobolds are. Kobolds are basically um, a cross between a goblin and an imp. And they are known not for their strength, but just for their ability to survive. So they live in the mountains of, of a region called Kerr. And they've got Kerr Keep and all that stuff. And, and they dwell in the... Um, I, I believe they, they dwell in caves and such. And it just they can survive. As you can see, the Crookshan kobolds is basically the Mons Goblin Raiders of the Kobolds. It's uh, zero mana, it's the O1 creature, and it is a red spell and Kobolds are a red creature. Now that's of course important because you wanna give, you wanna pump the Kobolds because it's just an O1 creature. The only good thing about the Kobold is that it's zero mana to cast. So how can you kind of take advantage of that? And uh, what most people do at first, of course, is use kind of the, the, the kings and the lords of Kobolds, but they don't have that actually. They've got a Kobold Taskmaster um, that gives all your creatures, all your kobolds, plus one, plus oh. So that already helps. It's just two mana to cast. And then you also have the kobold drill sergeant, two mana to cast as well. And it gives all your kobolds, plus oh, plus one, and trample. Now, again, it's kind of weird um, that, <laughs> that a taskmaster um, gives plus oh, plus one, and not plus one, plus oh. 
you know, you get more defense and also trample in combination with getting more toughness. Not sure how that works. It would have been nicer if it would give plus one plus O. Oh. Then again, I mean, it's old school. This is what you get. Um, so you've got Taskmaster and Drill Sergeant. You need them together basically to give all your kobolds plus one plus one. Now, interesting thing here, you see the, the, the creature type of the Taskmaster and Drill Sergeant or Summon Taskmaster and Summon Drill Sergeant, but they've been updated to Summon Kobold and Summon Kobold, meaning uh, they can pump each other. Okay, so you also have uh, Gauntlet of Might. You see that here in the picture as well. Gauntlet of Might is an amazingly strong artifact. Uh, it's it's on the reserve list. It hasn't been reprinted. A Gauntlet of Might is four to cast. All red creatures gain plus one, plus one, and all mountains provide an extra red mana when tapped. So this is an extremely strong artifact, valuable artifact as well, by the way, and we'll find that in this deck of Desert Nomad as well. And in the background, you see a picture of a plateau. Now, I know he's playing white, but he told me that he's actually not playing with the usual white suspect. So he's, I, I believe he's not playing with Swords to Plowsiers, for example. So I'm not sure what his plans are with white, uh, but since he's playing with the Kobold deck, I'm pretty sure they're spicy. So I'm really looking forward to discover what kind of white spells he's going to cast, or if he actually has any white. Maybe the white color is just there to distract people. Think, oh, there's white, there's disenchants and balances, and I have to be careful now with what I cast and how I do it. And maybe it's just uh, one big, um, well, I'm not going to swear on the channel, but one, one big messing, messing up with your mind and with the strategy of the opponent. So this is all I know. I don't have a deck picture, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, this is what I can share with you about this deck of Desert Nomad. Uh, let's go to the games and let's, uh, let's find out what this match is going to look like. Game number one. And uh, we're about to start. I believe I'm on the play sitting on the left with the Prodigal Sorcerer playmat. And my opponent's got a really nice playmat, by the way. Desert Nomad with a Soul Canard, a Swamp King playmat. Really nice. And it looks like he's taking a mulligan. And uh, the art is just stunning. Made by Richard Kane Ferguson. He's one of my favorite artists. Uh, I made a little movie, actually. Made a uh, top 10 old school Magic the Gathering artists. And uh, it was <laughs> really difficult to choose. But, I, I mean, I put him in, in, uh, in my top 10. I really like his style. Uh, but okay, let's get back to the game here. We see Desert Nomad has taken a mulligan. Needs to put a card now on the bottom of his library. So he's starting with just with six. Not a great start for him. And uh, let's see how I am going to start this because I'm on the play Swamp into a Willow the Wisp. So an 01 regeneration. Really a, a card that I used to see all the time uh, when I was uh, when I started playing. And there is a Bad Moon 1 2 attacking here. But. Um, it doesn't see that much play anymore, which in a way kind of surprises me with all the Nevenerals disc decks around. Uh, there's a Plateau into a Cobalt Taskmaster. So this is a 1-2 Cobalt, and it gives all the other Cobalts plus 1, plus 0. Oh. It doesn't pump itself, unfortunately, or else it would be kind of a good uh, a good creature. It will be a 2-2 two, two for 2, a bear in, in red without any downside. Actually, an upside, you can, I guess, giving all the other Cobalts plus 1, plus 0. Oh. And uh, there we see an evil presence on the plateau. And there's a disintegrate. Interesting choice here, disintegrate on the will of the wisp Nice thing about disintegrate is that um, it removes the creature from the game so I cannot regenerate it. And there is a zombie master entering the battlefield. It gives all the other zombies regeneration in Swamp Walk. It doesn't give itself or himself, I guess, uh, regeneration of Swamp Walk. So that's interesting to know. So I need another. Ooh, that's nice. I think that's a good choice. A quick lightning bolt. Because if I could get another zombie master next to it, I have regeneration creatures with Swamp Walk. And of course, Desert Nomad already has that swamp with that evil presence being cast. Tapping. F oh, a mind twist. Ah, this is dirty. This is dirty. And he's playing a lightning bolt on me. And he's also. Uh, losing a beautiful dragon whelp. Is that a beta dragon whelp? It really looks stunning. And he's dropping to 14 here. He's playing the big book. So this is actually not looking too bad here for Desert Nomad. Finding that book, that means he can get back uh, finding uh, drawing cards and finding uh, kobolds. And I think I'm pointing that out right now, saying, you know, it's not actually that bad. I only have one card in hand. There we see the first Cobalt. And a nice thing of zero casting cost is that he has enough mana 
to then activate his book. There we see a zombie master from my side. Now remember, I do have that bad moon. That means it's a 3-4 zombie master, so that's pretty big. And there's a chain lightning, and I think, oh, look at this. I'm now mentioning the bad moon, because I think earlier in the game, we kind of forgot about it, and we, we didn't mention it uh, in the game. So that was kind of a mistake, because we saw him with four toughness. Anyway, it is what it is. That bolt has been played, hadn't been noticed, and we're just carrying on now where we are. And uh, I think a set to Desert Nomad, you know, you can take your Chain Lightning back, you know, it's just, a, it's just a silly mistake. So it's back in his hand, but of course now I do know that he has a Chain Lightning. So if he would, for example, attack with his Cobalt, I'm probably not going to block now. Because it would have been kind of a nice play, I would have blocked a Cobalt with my Zombie Master. And then I would have taken a damage, and then he could have played a Chain Lightning second main. But anyway, that's not happening. I'm falling down to 12. And trying to find something useful, not finding it here, just passing turns. So that means that Desert Nomad, with that book, I mean, he's, he can start taking advantage of this. And, ooh, Gauntlet of Might. Interesting. That means his creatures are going to get plus two, plus two. So that Kobold is now a 2-2 two, two creature. And also his red mana can now tap for double the amount. So that's really nice with that book. And this is important here for me. I'm finding a Nevenerals disc. So hopefully next turn I can activate it. And I believe that Desert Nomad here is forgetting to use his mountains because they now give double mana. And I'm blocking his Taskmaster here. So the Taskmaster is going to die. I'm taking two damage, going to eight. And what I wanted to say is he could have tapped his two mana because they now, his two mountains, because they now give double mana because of the Gauntlet of Might, and that could have given him an extra card. I guess he forgot it. He could have done that on my end step. So, he's probably not going to do anything right now. Looking something up, something to do with the Taskmaster. And tapping some mana here. Oh, he's activating the book, but actually he only has to tap his two basic mountains for this. Interesting, we're both not really mentioning it. And playing another Zombie Master. This is actually great because now they're giving each other Regeneration and Swamp Walk. And now it's not looking so good for Desert Nomad all of a sudden. So I'm deciding to activate my Nevenerals disc now so that uh, my opponent doesn't get an extra activation off of the uh, Jadem Tome. And passing turn here, and I'm attacking. Now it's going to go fast because it's four damage a turn. Of course, the, the Bad Moon is gone, so I no longer have the plus one, plus one bonus. But of course, the creatures now have regeneration. So, I mean, Desert Nomad can bolt one, but then it can simply regenerate it. So instead, he's choosing to go for a Chain Lightning to the face, going down to five, and he's dropping to seven, playing a Dark Ritual into a Drain Life. And that's it. That's game one. Ooh, so close with that other bolt. Ay, 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 he was so close. Beautiful to see a fire breathing, by the way. Really nice to see that being included in the deck. Oh, and that's pretty cool. Um, Righteousness, that's, that's, uh, that's the name of the card. So that's maybe why he's put white in there. Anyway, uh, a pretty sloppy game one from both of us, I have to be honest here. But um, it's, a, it's a victory for me, thanks to the Drain Life. And let's go to game number two. Game number two. And uh, I'm one up here. And Desert Nomad is probably choosing to be on the play. And uh, he's, showing, <laughs> he's showing his hand, but it's above the camera. I'm showing my hand too, by the way. I think I saw a Zombie Master there. It went very quickly. Anyway, more interesting here is that Desert Nomad is taking another mulligan. That is very unfortunate. I mean... You just want these these games to to have like equal opportunity, and I know that having to mull is part of the game, but having to do it twice that's kind of that's not great. Anyway, he is keeping this hand it seems, putting a card on the bottom, and look at that great starter, two kobolds, oh one creatures. Can he find a taskmaster next turn? 
and there's an evil presence on his mountain. Maybe I'm hoping that he doesn't have the right, and there's another mountain. Okay, that tactic didn't work. There's a Cobalt Taskmaster hitting me here for two, dropping to 18. And this is what you want to do with the Cobalt's deck, getting your two Cobalt's in turn one, maybe even more, and then turn two, play the Taskmaster. And uh, casting here my second Basic Swamp. And what else am I going to do here? Picking up my hand again. And what can I do? I think I'm kind of stuck here at turn two. A little bit in the tank. Maybe I'm thinking about something like a ritual play. Anyway, I'm just passing turn here. Does that mean that I'm taking two damage again here? Actually taking three, of course, because the Taskmaster is attacking as well. So I'm dropping to 15 here. And so far, so good for uh, Desert Nomad playing another land on his side. So he's got three land right now and passing turn. Hasn't used a single Chain Lightning or Bull Lightning. Didn't need to, of course. Tapping three. We'll see he escape Zombies 2-2 two -two Vanilla Creature. And of course, I'm hoping to find a Zombie Master. But there's a Lightning Bolt on the Scave Zombies in the, at the end step. And now Desert Nomad is attacking again for three. Gonna drop to 12. Another Kobolds. Ay, ay, ay. Things are not looking great for me. I need to get my defenses going. Or, of course, play a Nevenerals Disc. I wonder if Desert Nomad is playing with any artifact removal. I mean, Shatter is in red. He's playing with white, but I don't think he's playing with Disenchants. And attacking now for four damage. Gonna drop to eight here. But of course, next turn I can activate the disc. And I don't have to hurry with that, I can just pass turn. Playing a Will o' the Wisp and playing a Demonic Tutor, so this could kind of be my way back into this game. And I wonder if Desert Nomad is also playing with pump spells like uh, Bloodlust. I think that card would fit in really well into this deck. Um, and now passing turn. So I have that Willow the Wisp that I can regenerate. Probably going to wait until Desert Nomad is going to attack. And then use the disc. I've got three cards in hand and I of course just played the Demonic Tutor. I wonder what I looked for. And let's see, what is Desert Nomad going to do here? He is pretty much in the tank, so that means maybe he has something against that disc. I mean, it looks pretty self-explanatory. Simply attack, forcing me to use or forcing me, but then I'll probably use the disc, regenerate my Willow, and then just hope that he can find something else. I mean, on the, on the plus side, he is going to get his basic mountain back because I'm going to destroy my own evil presence. Um, so he's going to declare attacks, I guess, losing all his kobolds in the process. And there's a new kobold, and I like this, a chain lightning getting rid of that will o' the wisp. Tapping four here, playing the book. And there is a book on the side of Desert Nomad as well. And there is a zombie master. And finding another planes empty-handed now, activating the tome. Drawing an extra card. Now we both have tomes and it's looking pretty good for me at the moment. I mean, I'm, I, I am on eight though. Aye, and there is a mind twist just for one. And that means he loses his card, but it's just a basic mountain, so it's not too bad. Drawing another card here. Probably going to activate his tome. Yes, that's what he does. Finding another card. Finding a basic mountain. And passing turn here. Attacking again. So he's dropping to 16. And of course, I have the book as well. And changing one of his planes into a swamp with evil presence. Passing turn here. Is he going to untap that book? And he's going to draw 
Guess he's forgetting to untap, but I would just, you know, it's untapped basically. He hasn't used it yet. He's on 16, I'm on 8. But he needs to find a way to put some pressure here on the board. Can he find something? He is pretty, he is in the tank, it seems. Tapping for three here. And what is he going to do? And, oh, it's hard to see what he does. He's actually playing a stone rain. Wow. No, he's taking it back. I agree. It's better probably to just to draw a card than to, to play a stone rain at this stage in the game. And there's a Cobalt Taskmaster. Oh, a terror. Oh, man. That's unfortunate here for Desert Nomad. Attacking him. He's going to go down to 14 using the book, finding even more cards. There is a basic mountain. And there's a disintegrate. I'm dropping to two life here. Now it's getting interesting. And we see a drain life. I that is difficult because drain life also gives me life. And that's kind of countering that whole disintegrate basically. So I'm on nine. And oh man, if I wouldn't have had that drain life, he would have had the game by now. But playing a well placed lightning bolt and then that stone rain that we knew he still had. So the lightning bolt on my zombie master. And another evil presence on his second planes. That means he doesn't have any white mana at the moment because they've turned into swamps. And there is, oh, really nice. Ah, uh, terror on the dragon whelp. That's unfortunate. Passing turn here. Still has that book on tap though. And he's using it on the end step. So this is a pretty exciting matchup. Pretty exciting game too. I wonder if, if uh, Desert Nomad can find something here. I mean, after that disintegrate and he had that bolt in hand as well, he, he, he almost finished me off. But almost is not good enough in Magic, of course. Using the book now to draw a card. Passing turn. He is forgetting to tap it, though. But he's not using it twice, so that's all good. And another disintegrate. Has he won the game? He's won it. Oh, it's 1-1. That was exciting. I wasn't really finding anything, I guess, there with that book. I was drawing a lot of cards. I wasn't really finding anything useful to put threat on the board. And uh, that means it's a 1-1. One, one. So we're going to go to game number three. Game number three, and it's 1-1. One, one. I, I am on the play, so that's a little advantage, I guess. Starting with a basic swamp passing turn here. Look at that start here. Desert Nomad again finding double kobolds. We saw that in game number two as well. And an evil presence on his mountain, turning it into a basic swamp. And can he find, an, again, a Taskmaster? That means two damage. So again, the dream is coming true here for the Kobolds player. And there's Escape Zombies. 2-2 two -two Vanilla, reliable creature here. Can I find a Zombie Master? Because then that 2-2 two -two is turning into a Swamp Walker with regen regeneration. That would be really sweet. That's what I'm going for, of course. But let's first see what Desert Nomad's going to do. There is a quick disintegrate. He just wants to get that damage in. Attacking for three here, dropping to 15. And can I find... And there is... Ooh, a Royal Assassin. We haven't seen that one yet. And if unchecked, the Royal can become a really uh, big pain for Desert uh, Nomad here. Tapping one red, is he going to fire off a chain or a bolt on that Royal Assassin? Look at his cards, only three cards in hand. Doesn't have a lot of spells yet, uh, anymore. A lot of cards, I should say. So he's choosing wisely what to do with them. 
And he's playing a fire breathing. Interesting. He's just going to go in with everything. And he just wants to deal as much damage as he possibly can. And how cool is this? A fire breathing on a kobold. I mean, really, I appreciate this Desert Nomad. Very, very cool play. And uh, that means more damage for me. I'm dropping to 10, actually. And I'm probably going to kill the kobold with the fire breathing. Am I going to do that now? I'm going to do that now. Interesting. Going to go for the Taskmaster instead. And he's probably going to hit me again with the fire breathing one. He can deal three more damage. So I will go down to seven. But I'm playing a terror here. Oh, I feel mean. Another kobold. But of course, without the Taskmaster, just not, not as powerful. Tapping four here, playing the book. JM Day Tome. And playing a Stone Rain, it's not too bad because I need to pay four for the book. I guess I don't play a Zombie Master instead. But of course, Stone Rain is not as powerful against these mono. Color decks. Look at that. Attacking with my Royal Assassin. That is funny. I, I, in all honesty, I don't think I should do that, but okay. Some With some games, you know, you think, oh, I wish I would have attacked earlier and, and getting that one point of damage in, so maybe, maybe it's a good decision. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Desert Nomad's dropping to 19. It's his turn now. Um, what is he going to do? Tapping for 5. What can we expect here? Maybe another burn spell? And if so, what is he going to choose for? No, he's untapping everything again. He's just passing turn here. So I think that maybe he was thinking about casting a burn spell, but he wasn't sure what target to choose and just passed turn. Oh, there's a Fisher. That's a cool card. It's a very target creature or land. And he's actually going for my Royal Assassin. And, oh, that's why he went for my Royal. He's playing. This is so cool. Playing Sheevan Dragon. He can actually win this one next turn. He can swing in. Oh, Willow the Wisp. I am so lucky. Probably found that with the book. And because of that Willow, I can stop the Sheevan at least for now. He'll need another Fisher. Finding a Kobold's Taskmaster. Which is not too bad either, but... I have that Willow. And am I going to attack now with the Zombie Master or just keep it at bay? Um, you know, I know that my opponent is playing with Burn Spell, so I don't really want to get lower than 10. 10 is low enough. And there we see Desert Nomad playing another basic mountain, not finding anything here. Ooh, another Willow. And it's not looking great here for Desert Nomad. I mean, he hasn't lost, but I'm now I'm kind of taking control of the game. There's a Buckraft. Now remember, oh, now he has two swamps. I wanted to say, remember, he still has one swamp because of that early evil presence. And that means I can now start attacking him for three at a time with that Bokrath and of course using mana open to regenerate the Willows and draw extra cards with the Tome. And also finding, wow, also finding a disc. It looks like I now have complete control. The only way for Desert Nomad, I think, out of this dire situation is just by finding Burn. Burn, 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 and burn his way through this game, just like he did in game number two with that brilliant disintegrate at the end. I mean, I am on 10. He's got lots and lots of mana. If he can find some extra mana and he can find a burn spell. I'm playing with black. That means no disintegrates, or I mean, uh, no counter spells or any circle of protections. It would actually be good if I can find a drain life to just drain my opponent. And this is a good move. He's attacking me here because I know that he knows that when he's attacking me, I have to regenerate one of my willows and I cannot draw an extra card. And tapping two here. What am I going to cast for two? 
playing a bad moon, making matters worse because now my Barkraft is a 4-4, so I can deal 4 damage a turn. That means he's dropping to 10 as well, so we're... I have the same life count at the moment. And he, first he has to deal with the Barkraft. Tapping 4 here, playing a Gauntlet of Might, and a Gauntlet of Might could become interesting... Because remember, his red mana, his mountains now tap for double the amount of mana. It's kind of a one-sided mana flare for him. And if he, if he can find a burn spell, it pretty much means game over for me. So I wonder if that triggers me to activate the disc. I don't think it should. I think I just have to. Or, oh, interesting, attacking here. I am I am pretty pretty afraid of um, of a burn spell. He's blocking one, regenerating, and then playing a drain life, and that's it. That's game again. Finishing it off with a drain life here, and uh, wow, wow! I, I must say, uh, Desert Nomad, well played. Really enjoyed uh, seeing these cards like um, like Fisher, a card you don't see often. Uh, seeing a card, I saw a Keldon Warlord in there. Unfortunately, we didn't see any play. Uh, we're seeing some really, really spicy cards that you've been playing. In all honesty, if I can give you some advice, I would drop white. Or if I would keep white in there, I would really, um, yeah, really think about it. What do you want to do with that color? Because uh, the Righteousness alone, I mean, it's a fun card, but it's definitely not enough. Uh, maybe, I see now Orcish Ar 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 Artillery, maybe you can add uh, Circle of Protection uh, uh, red in there. Anyway, enough uh, jabbering uh, here uh, from my part. This was the uh, match for today. Thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks. If you want to support the channel, you actually already did by watching and enjoying this content. Leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, do you have some tips for the Cobalt player? Do you have a Cobalt deck yourself? Uh, also, let me know what you think of the Zombie Disco deck. Uh, remember, it's a nice budget brew, but if you have any um, ideas how we can make it even better with keeping like a budget, let me know. Interested to hear from you. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can also subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. We now have 1,800 uh, subs, I believe, so it's really going well with the channel. You can also support Timmy Talks financially, so you can become a Patreon of Timmy Talks. Uh, you can do that by clicking the link that's appearing right now. That'll take you to the Patreon page and you can already support us for just a dollar a month. So you don't have to be a millionaire to support Timmy Talks. Um, talking about patrons, let's go to the end scroll. Let's take a look at the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als vinkertjes samba kan zien.